is Jesus Christ? How does God incarnate relate to the eternal Godhead? Is Jesus really the Savior of mankind? What caused Pilate to cry out, Behold the man? Discover new and exciting facts about the person of Jesus. Learn and appreciate the wonders of God's only begotten Son. As Dr. Lester Sumrall presents today's lesson on the person of Jesus Christ. Bless you, everybody. Bless these who study the Word. May the Word come alive within their hearts. The Bible says, With the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Let life come up out of the Word. We pray that you will excite our spirits and excite our souls and let us rise up and know, to know Him who is, who is to know life eternal. And for your blessings upon your Word, upon these as we study, and also as you make us to know Him who is our Savior better, we want to say thank you. And all the people said, we're very excited about our lessons, the person of Jesus Christ. I couldn't imagine anybody not being excited about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I'm sure that if we were to change our faith words around, it would help us. Rather than saying, Lord, I want more faith, uh, for us to say, uh, Lord, I want to know you more because your faith is in direct relationship to your knowledge of the Lord Jesus. I, I can show you that a person that's completely ignorant of the Lord could not trust him, you know. And a person that only had a little bit of knowledge couldn't trust very much, you know. But a person that completely knows him can trust a long ways. And so, uh, you know, faith is trust. And so what we need in our lives is the knowledge of the Master. Can you say amen? All right, we're studying the person of the Lord Jesus as related to his 12 stones. And we're reading directly from the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's in Revelation uh, 21 and 14. And the wall of the city, this is the New Jerusalem, had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So these 12 apostles have their names in stone uh, in the New Jerusalem. In the Revelation chapter 21, same chapter, verse 19, it says, And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth a sardonyx, the sixth a sardius, the seventh a chrysolite, the eighth a beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a, 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 a chrysoprasus, the eleventh a jacinth, and the twelfth an amethyst. And these are the 12 types of stones that the apostles will have their names upon. They are the 12 stones that the master built his church on. They were the footings and the foundations of the church of the Lord Jesus. We find, number one, that Jesus Christ chose and called these disciples. They were his own personal uh, relationships. In Matthew 4, 18, it says, Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers. Simon called Peter, Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. He said unto them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed Jesus. And going on from this, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed Jesus. And so these uh, stones, or these men that were stone-like, uh, were, were those that were garnered by the Lord Jesus Christ personally. And then it, he gave power to these persons, uh, to these disciples. In Matthew 10, and, uh, verse 1, it says, when, when Jesus had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power or authority against unclean to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And the names of the and he gave the full name of all of all the of all the apostles. Then in verse five he says, Jesus sent them forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the nations, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter not yet, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you have received, freely give. And so these 12 men that Jesus chose to be the foundation of the church, uh, these men gave his strength to do that. 
And if God calls you to do something, He'll give you strength for it. How many believe that? Yeah. He gives energy for any, for any position He lays upon you. He gives you energy to perform it. And number three, Jesus gave them a commission to fulfill after His return to the Father. In Mark 16, 15, And Jesus said unto them, Go you into all the world, the inhabited earth, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. Don't you like the positiveness of what the Lord Jesus Christ has to say? In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And so this was his commission to these men after he was gone. They were not just to bless people while he was on the earth, giving them strength and power to do so, but they were to bless, they, they were to bless after he was gone in the same manner as when he was present. And you read the same in Matthew 28, 8, 18 through 20, showing them how, how they should do that. And then in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he, he reaffirms it, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be dynamic witnesses of me. Who were these men? What kind of men were these chosen stones that were to be the mighty men of valor, that were to be the strong men for building the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, who were to be the leaders? What kind of men were they? They were ordinary men. Uh, you don't like to call any Christian common, but they were average people. They were fishermen. They were tax collectors. They were tent makers. And yet, we find them to be very privileged men because of the one that they came to know and to understand and to live with. In Matthew 13, 17, I, it says, Verily I say unto you, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen, and to hear those things which you hear, and have not heard them. I'd like for you to make a little mark at that, at that place there. And let me tell you that Smith Wigglesworth, in my presence, wept and told me of the mighty things that would take place in this generation that's beginning to play, take place right now. He wept and said, I won't get to see it, but you will. You know, sometimes there's a privileged generation. Jesus said they were a privileged generation because many had wanted to see it. They didn't get to see it. And I'm saying to you today that those of a past generation give anything to us in what we're going to see in the world today. You glad you're alive? These were enthusiastic. They were excited about the ministry. God help us all to be that way. They were devoted men. They, took, they forsook everything to follow the Master. In Matthew 19, 21, Jesus said unto them, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. That's what kind of a commission Jesus gave men, to forsake all and to follow him. These were courageous men. These were men who all almost died. When we, when we reach into the lives of these people, uh, we find Andrew was the first one of these 12 stones. He was the first one. And John won the two disciples, John the Baptist, and they followed Jesus. Jesus saw them following and said, What's he cute? Rabbi, which I tradition master, and they came and saw where he dwelt. And for it was about the ninth, about, about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. The other one was John. So the first two, uh, the chosen stones that were ever to follow the Lord Jesus. Andrew was the brother of Peter. He was originally a disciple of John the Baptist. He became a missionary to what is today southern Russia around the Black Sea. Uh, that, that's where Andrew the Holy Ghost determined that Andrew should minister. He ministered what is today called Greece and Asia Minor. Uh, Andrew was, was crucified on a cross. It is said that he lived two days after he was tied to the cross, preaching most of the time to the people. I'd like to tell you, to be a chosen one of God could cause you some suffering. Most people don't want to suffer, so they don't ever become a chosen one of God. They just want to back off and be a mediocre uh, situation. But these men that were the foundation stones of the Christian church, they had to pay a price for the position that they held in Christ. You may have to pay a price 
if you become an unusual one for the kingdom of God. And then there was Simon Peter, uh, the, the brother, and John 1, 41, he first findeth his own brother Simon, saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. A Peter, in his later years, did evangelistic and missionary work among Jews, going as far as Babylon. Uh, tradition says that he was crucified, head downward. Peter bears a closer resemblance to many of us today. He was impetuous. He was quick to speak. He was hasty in his temper and fearful in times of danger. Yet he became one of the greatest leaders of the Christian church. Peter was arrested by the Sanhedrin. He was imprisoned in Acts chapter 12, verse 2. It says that the authorities killed James, a brother of John, with a sword. And because, because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And these were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrinians. So, I guess that's four them four them, to keep him, intending after each reign to the people. So, uh, uh, Peter, the outstanding. Uh, Disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ suffered much, misunderstood much, and spent some time in prison. Uh, Peter received the first Gentile into the universal church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the first one that broke the borders and went outside the house of Israel to find converts into the gospel of the Lord Jesus. The third of these is called John the Beloved. He is the brother of John of James. He, he was the first apostle. His brother James was the first apostle to die. James was the first one that was slaughtered by the, uh, by the, uh, by the, by the local authorities in, in Jerusalem. John was the last, his, his brother was the last to die. And he, uh, we understand he died about 100 A.D., possibly in the city of Ephesus. He was a of Turkey uh, for several years. Uh, and there he wrote the book of the Revelation, the last book of the Bible. John, uh, when he first met the Lord, was young. He was ambitious. With his brother James, they were called the Sons of Thunder. It would be nice to meet people like that, wouldn't it? I, I'm, I'm going to meet old Thunder and I get to heaven. You better believe it. Mark 3, 17, the, and James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, he, he surnamed them Borgenes, which is the Sons of Thunder. And so when he when Jesus got acquainted with them, he says, boys, you're the sons of thunder. It must have been that caused a lot of problems. I don't know. John was the disciple whom Jesus loved. In, 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 in John 19, 26, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, woman, behold thy son. So John accepted responsibility for Mary, the mother of Jesus, no doubt, Joseph, her husband, was already passed away. In John 19, 27, Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own house, and he took care of her as long as Mary lived on the face of the earth. So that's the ministry of these stones, you know. Sometimes we just name off names and we forget what kind of life they lived, what kind of death they died, you see. And in doing that, we miss, we miss because God might want you to be a great one, and are you qualified? And are you ready? And are you prepared? And, and if you're not, you cannot do the great things that God would have you to do. All right. James the Major. Uh, he preached in Jerusalem and Judea. He was the leader of the Jerusalem Assembly in, in Acts 15, 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the man of Moses, you cannot be saved. Isn't that something? Trying to switch the old into the new. And therefore, Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go to Jerusalem under the apostles and elders about this question. And at that time, uh, James was a pastor in Jerusalem, and he made the final decision about the Gentile church, that all they had to do was abstain from blood. Anybody want to know why he said that? You don't know? Because blood is a life, and God doesn't want us eating life. You don't eat blood because blood is life, and you don't eat life, you see. And, and, uh, and so he told them to abstain from blood and abstain from fornication. He did not tell them to keep the, you know, the, the ancient laws of the Jews. 
Uh, James was beheaded by Herod in A.D. 44. In Acts 12 and 2, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. James was in partnership with his father and his brother. They owned a fishing business on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And as Jesus walked by the sea and saw them, straightway he called them and, and called them away from their father. They immediately left that ship and their father, and they followed Jesus. So James was usually mentioned as one of the first three disciples. Now, that would be good for you to, to, to you know, go through the, the four Gospels with. Uh, you'll notice that when, when Jesus was transfigured, there were three there, Peter, James, and John, you see. And, and in the garden, the, the nearest uh, to his great burden, and, and the nearest to him, when he was carrying the burdens of the whole world, he left part of his disciples here. He took three a few steps further. They were Peter, James, and John. And so he was one of the top three in the, in the twelve that followed the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and number nine, you have Matthew. Uh, Matthew was, was a brother of James the Less. Uh, it's interesting how families get involved. There, if you will study uh, closely, you'll notice that, uh, that, uh, that several of these uh, apostles had interrelation through, th through the family. And, and so uh, uh, God works that way. In, in a church like this, you'd be amazing. You'd be amazed at the family relations, you know. Uh, a brother brings another brother. A friend brings an another relative. And the first thing you know, you've got a family relationship going. It's very beautiful. God likes it that way. And uh, Matthew was the brother of James, the less. He was the writer of the first gospel. He had a tax collector. <laughs> he was a tax collector, or a, what they called in those days a publican. He was a Jew who collaborated with the Roman government in assessing and collecting taxes from the Jews. Now, if you wanted to be real popular in America, that is, uh, uh, that uh, you could uh, uh, let the Russians be in charge of the country, and you collect the taxes for the Russians, and you know how your neighbors loved you. Well, that's what a tax collector was in the days of Jesus. The Romans were the oppressors, and the tax collectors uh, worked for Rome and collected the taxes off the Jews, and sometimes they let them get all they could. How many knows that could be a greedy tax collector? Yeah, they were unloved. And Matthew would have had some education and was acquainted with Arab Aramaic and Greek and the Latin languages. He would have been an educated person. He wrote the gospel according to St. Matthew, uh, the only gospel that records a complete Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 through verse 7, uh, through chapter 7. It is believed that Matthew was killed in Ethiopia and that he was a martyr to the cause. I'd like for you to notice particularly how all these people died. Uh, I don't think any of them died in the same place. When he told them to go into all the world, they took it literally and took off. And, uh, and, and uh, they stayed in Jerusalem for several years, but then they took off around the world. The next one you come to is number 10, it is, is Bartholomew. Now this apostle, according to tradition, was a missionary to, to, to the Armenian people and, and was flayed to death for preaching the gospel. And so uh, Bartholomew, we don't know too much about him in the gospels, uh, but tradition says that he went uh, from Israel, he went north, and then he went some east into the area of the Armenian people. And there uh, he, was, he, he was beaten to death with, with stripes and with uh, whips uh, for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number 11, you have Thomas. And, and tradition says that Thomas labored in Parthia. Now, now, now that would be over where Iran is today. In Parthia, in, in Persia, and uh, that's part of Iran and north of Iran, and India, suffering martyrdom near Madras at St. Thomas. And, and the Indian people uh, still today have through their, through their lineage of, of knowledge that Christianity came to India in the time of the apostles and that Thomas is their patron saint. He is the one that brought the gospel to the people of India. So Thomas was with the disciples in the upper room. Uh, he was there, and, and, uh, and uh, he suffered martyrdom near the great city of Madras uh, in India. And John 14, 1, 7, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me and my Father's house are many living places. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Whither I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas spoke up, uh, this disciple called Thomas. 
And uh, he, he spoke up again in unbelief after the resurrection, you see. Uh, and said, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? And, and Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Whether Jesus is in heaven or whether he's walking the face of this earth, he's always the same to you and me. He can be inside of us or he could be a corporate around us. But he is a living person that can be real close to you. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man, say no man. That means no other religion. No other religion on the face of this earth uh, can bring you to the Father. He says there's no, he says, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No person has ever come to God excepting through the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other door. And Jesus said, if you try to go in another door, you're the same or three of thief and robber. He says, if ye had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. That's, that's some of the activities of the person named, named, named Thomas. Uh, then you have number 12, James the Minor, one of the foundation stones, one of the 12 stones of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to tradition, he preached in Palestine and in Egypt. He was, he was crucified in Egypt. Uh, he said in, in, in James 5 and 7, Be patient, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and, and the latter rain. So there were some of these disciples that bore the same name. You had the first James, the greater James, and this is called James a minor. Uh, but yet not so minor because he, he wrote James, the book of James. And so uh, until he tells us that we should be patient until we, we have received the early and the latter, latter rain. How many know we're receiving the latter rain now? The world is receiving the latter rain right now. And, and so the, the, the fulfilling of the words uh, of James, many of these men were, were prophets. They may have all been prophets, but many of these are prophets uh, in the Word here, you know, that we have written down in the Word. Then we come to one called Jude, or Thaddeus. Tradition says that he preached in Assyria and Persia, and that he died as a martyr in Persia. So he would have, he may have met up with some of the others over there, or may not have met up with them. Thaddeus is mentioned a few times in the Bible, and then it seems that each person had his own version of his, of his name. Uh, Thaddeus was also called Lebius, whose surname was Thaddeus. And, and, so, and, and so we find that, uh, that, that, that he was, uh, uh, went by two names. And so you have to look up both of them to know exactly about him. He received his call to be a disciple at the Sea of Tiberias, along with several other, other disciples. Jesus chose him and said, I would like for you to be my disciple. Then on number 14, we have Simon, who was also called the Canaanite. Tradition says that he was crucified. He was a zealot against the Christians before he met Christ. And we can believe he used zeal in the service of the Lord and Master after he met Jesus. Zeal means intense enthusiasm for a cause or for a person. Nothing he ever did for Christ is specifically mentioned in the Gospels or in the book of Acts. Uh, you know, you have to realize that some of us just seem to be lost in the crowd. And... and uh, I guess it's all right. Uh, th th this, is, this is one of them right here. He was, he was there. He was counted. He walked with them. He slept with them. He ate with them. But uh, we don't have anything he ever did. And he might have done a load of things. Nobody just caught on to it. And, and so if you're not given the prominence that you'd like to be given, you're going to get it in heaven because God's keeping the good kind of books up there, the right books. Can you say amen? Then there was one named Nathaniel. Nathaniel lived in a little village of Cana, less than five miles from the, from the, from the hill of, of, of Nazareth, yet he had not heard of Jesus, although Jesus lived four or five miles away. It is no wonder he was skeptical and wanted to see for himself if such a person could come from a little town of Nazareth. His friend Philip told him he had found the Messiah. Nathaniel got, got close enough to Jesus that he could see that he was truly the Messiah, and he became one of those 12 stones. And so the apostles evangelized the inhabited world in their time. As we told you, Thomas went to the Parthians. Uh, John went into Asia. Uh, Peter 
uh, possibly went uh, to Pontus and also to Rome. And uh, Andrew went to what is called Cynthia, and James and Thomas, Mesopotamia, and Philip to Asia. And so these great foundation stones laid the, the foundation of, of, of evangelism and of missionaryism and of the outreach of the church. And uh, this is a very brief one. We have, we have other lessons uh, on, on these men that are entire, entire lessons on them. But we just wanted you to know that in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, He chose people. Now, He is still choosing people today. And those men might have been ill-treated by many. They might have been hated by some, some. They might have been killed by others. But in the New Jerusalem, the city that's coming down from God out of heaven, that will be with us forever. Every time you look at the footings and the foundations, you're going to see their names inscribed there. Their names will be there. The, the names of the 12 apostles are in the 12 foundation stones of the New Jerusalem. I just want to assure you one thing. Anything you do for Jesus, you're going to get paid for it. You're going to be reimbursed for it. Anything you do for Jesus, He's going to do something for you. Jesus is not in debt to anybody, anywhere, any place. That whatever we do from Him, He comes back and blesses them. Now, I find this personally. I've served the Lord for over 50 years, and I have found that God gives to those that give to Him. And you give your life to Him, and He's going to give you good and gracious and beautiful and wonderful things. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. Has Jesus been good to you? I hope He has been great to you and will always be wonderful to you. Now, Father, we thank you for the study of the men that surrounded Jesus Christ. Every leader has such a situation. Every president has the executives that around him all the hours of the day. And every, every, every great general of the army has those that are around him all the time. And so Jesus had these 12. And we call them the foundation stones because they're in the New Jerusalem. And these were men that laid the foundation of the whole Christian communion, communion forever. And we thank you for such remarkable and beautiful people. And Lord, we say, make us to be stones, living stones for the Master, until we shall see him face to face. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand, everybody. If you would like a copy of today's teaching on audio cassette, send a contribution of $5 or more to LaCie, Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, 46624. Please mention the program number on your screen when ordering. A free catalog of Dr. Sumrall's tapes and books is also available through this address. The production of this program was made possible through private contributions to LaCie. This has been a LaCie Broadcasting Network production.